move on to another sort of side topic that's sort of semi-related. Trump's kids. Oh yeah. They have they have they've hopped on the crazy train. You know, let's just say can you imagine the amount of therapy you would need to like undo the damage of being that man's child? Well, it's not the therapy. <clears throat> Maybe for the younger two, Tiffany and Baron, but the older three they are so far in it and we'll get into this maybe too because we'll do a dave ramsey clip later but imagine if he were going to prison and his fortune was gone his kids would what would they do all they've ever done is work for him all these kids have ever done is work for donald trump tiffany was the smart one i'm gonna go get my law degree and go do something else <laughs> that was the smart one out of the out of the kids but yeah, that's well. She's also the one. Not that I'm well versed in in the you know Trump kids, but you know she's also the one that seems to have the least to do with them, just in general. That that you know doesn't have. It doesn't look like there's much relationship there. No. Maybe I'm wrong, and maybe they freaking text each other every day or something. But that's not what it looks like. No, to me. I don't think so. Anyway, but the Trump kids have gone nuts because it looks like. In the New York case, he's going to lose his ability to do business. They're going to lose their ability to do this kind of business anymore. Um, so he's going to be broke. They're going to be kind of sucking whatever, hind tit, whatever is left over, right? On top of that fact, um, you know, there's criminal charges that, that apply to him and sort of apply to some of them. Um, and they've got other issues going on, but they have gone off the rails. And just to show you... Here's David Packman again, but here is a clip from Donald Jr. Donald Trump Jr. going absolutely nuts. Donald Trump Jr. also seemingly very unwell, struggling to speak even more than Donald Trump. Don Jr. has what I guess they call a free speech show or a free speech platform. I have to tell you, I find the concept so stupid, so stupid, in the sense that the idea of free speech for the sake of speech to me is not super exciting. I don't want to deny anyone's speech. That has never been my position. I'm close to a free speech absolutist in the sense that if it's not illegal, let the marketplace decide whether speech is up or down voted metaphorically and proverbially. But there's this thing on the right about we are creating a free speech platform. I'm regaining my free speech, even though they, they rarely have ever actually lost their free speech. And then they see it as a virtue for its own sake, just to say stupid things. And the prototypical example of that is Don Jr.'s show Triggered, which is one of the dumbest <laughs> uses of the so-called free speech that he's regained that I can imagine. We don't know whether he uses uppers, but he seems hopped up out of his gourd here. He rants about the price of hair curdlers and also <laughs> hone ownership. Yes, I know that it sounds like a strange thing to say. Let's listen to this. Right, for inflation is basically said, yeah, yeah. The the price of a hair curdler you know, maybe <laughs> maybe has come down a little bit, or at least the inflation on it has come down a bit. But he seems so hopped up. A hair curdler. It I've seen hair curdle like spoiled milk. <laughs> And it is an ugly situation, that I can assure you. His speech continuing to deteriorate as the show continues. The high interest rates combating the inflation has made home ownership. Home ownership? Has anyone ever owned their own home? <laughs> That's... A... <laughs> anyway, well, he's just, I mean, it's gone. I mean, he's... What on God's green earth is that? <laughs> I'm going to tell you this. So, <laughs> when I was a cop, I remember I, I was buying Coke from this guy, right? I was undercover by a Coke. I had to spend 30 minutes in a public bathroom with this guy just to do a Coke deal. Because he, he was talking like, just wouldn't stop talking. And just all kinds of random shit. And I'm like, and part of it's like you're sitting there thinking, man, and the only reason people do this is to get the Coke. Should be a freaking red flag that maybe the Coke's not that important. <laughs> if I got to sit here for 30 minutes and listen to this shit. But he's got a show where he does it. It's hilarious. 
And the thing that really I love the most is hair curlers is what he's talking about. That curdlers, but he's 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 on something. But hair curdlers. Anyway, when's the last time you saw anybody really with a hair curler? Are they real popular anymore? Or? Well, I was getting myself a little stuck on this hair curler thing, too, regardless of how he said it. And it made me feel like, is he talking about curling irons? Like, like not literal old school curlers, curlers that you had a bunch on your head. Is he talking about, like, the curling, curling iron? iron? Yeah, a lot of people have those. But the old hair curlers. I feel like it, um, I feel like it has to be a curling iron he's talking about because the old school hair curler thing doesn't make sense. Not that this makes a lot of sense anyway, yeah. mind you, but it makes even less sense that way. Yeah. I don't know. So unless you're a hairstylist. <laughs> well, and then, and then once I got past, I decided it was curling irons. Are we buying so many curling irons that we're like <laughs> freaking out about the prices of them? Okay. All right, viewers, you might make fun of me in the comments with this fine Duncan reads that crap. I know he just tells me something good happens, but we all can see I don't spend a lot of time curling my hair. <laughs> but I think like, what? Well, even when I was doing that, I bought a curling iron like what twice a freaking decade or something. Like, oh I, yeah, I wasn't stressed at the price of curling irons. It's not like that's not a weekly, you know, supermarket buy or something. Like, no, it's people like are. Stressing about the price of bread or or why cereal's not cheap anymore or gas in the tank or something, but not really hair curlers. Yeah, Sorry. it's one of those simple appliances. It's like a toaster. It's not like you're buying a new toaster every month. I mean, so, yeah. Anyway, I don't – he's trying to talk about inflation and he's going crazy about it. Um, but yeah, so yeah, his kids are freaking out too. And then here's uh, Eric Trump. <laughs> the slower one, <laughs> and he has a he has kind of a weird interview with uh, Carrie Lake, who lost in Arizona, who's a total nut job, right? But here's Luke Beasley. He's going to introduce this real quick. But this is a this was an odd one. So we'll watch this one real quick. For you, one of the most bizarre interviews I've looked at in a very, very long time, uh, and some clips to show you from it. Carrie Lake is now running for Senate in Arizona. Lord help us. Um, and she <laughs> sat down for an interview with Eric Trump, either right before her announcement for a Senate run or after uh, sometime in that time frame. And you put Carrie Lake and Eric Trump in the same room. Yikes. Yikes is going to happen, I can tell you. And indeed, yikes happen in this interview. So uh, we're going to get to, just as a preview, we're going to get to seemingly Eric Trump accusing or alluding to his dad engaging in unlawful child labor practices i'll show you you don't believe me but i'll show you um and also the most outrageous claim made by one of them about the amazingness of donald trump which is so absurd and uh some other things as well but first i want to show you carrie lake who by the way is running for senate she still pretends she won the gubernatorial race back in 2022 completely um ridiculous and You'll hear some of that talk in what I'm about to show you. This is the intro as presented on Carrie Lake's platform of what was to come in this interview. I've had many people tell me, don't fight the elections. That's taboo. You know, it's not taboo to go talk to your children about changing gender, but it's taboo to, to question your government when there's problems, when there's corruption. Yeah. Do you think that there's something changing a little bit there? I, I've said this to you before. I've said this to you a hundred times. I, you've been part of such a movement as a one band army. Of, of something that so many people have run from. Voter fraud is real. You know, you'll, you'll never have me believe uh, that there wasn't serious fraud <laughs> in the election. I would parallel Joe Biden around the country. He'd be in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. I'd be across the block somewhere, you know, Wilkes-Barre. He would have 20 people. I'd have a 1,000. If it looks like a duck and acts like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a damn duck, right? And, you know, we were seeing that all over the country. And then you were seeing in Pennsylvania, you... I'm so stupid. Oh my god! But you know, at least he doesn't sound all gacked out like his brother. I mean, that's like no, but kind of a little consolation. But you know, the thing about it is, is that I mean, I bet you if you jiggle your keys in front of him, it would distract him. <laughs> He'd get all excited, <laughs> play peekaboo with Eric Trump. He's so stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> peekaboo. 
Joe Biden couldn't have won because he didn't draw in the same crowds at his rallies that he didn't really hold. Why? Because it was freaking COVID. <laughs> and besides, you had Trump saying enough crazy shit and Trump screwed up COVID bad enough and a million people had died. At that point, it was like four or 500,000 people had died. Right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't think Biden really needed to get out there because nobody wasn't... It's not like we were all rushing to vote for Biden. We were all rushing to vote against Trump. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it could have been just about any Democrat at that point. Right. <laughs> you could have picked... Nancy Pelosi and I'd have held my nose and voted for. Her. Wouldn't have been happy about it, but I'd have done it. I mean, I voted for Hillary. I mean, you know, and Hillary wasn't my first choice either. <laughs> well, frequently by the time you get to who the actual nominees are in your party, your first choice is no is not the person. Right. No, I mean, most, most of the time, my first choice is not the person, you know, unless there just really wasn't very many people in the primaries, but it doesn't feel like very often it's yeah, my it's, first choice there. It's different because we're, we're on the left. So on the left, we don't really deify our leaders. No. We treat them like what they are. They're, they're civil servants. <laughs> You know, they get the respect right. for being a civil servant, but that's about all you get. You're not a king. You're not a god. But mm-hmm. with conservatives, it's like Trump is like the second coming of Jesus. He has, I mean, it's weird. They were like that about McCain, too, and Sarah Palin. And I mean, it's just weird stuff. Weird, weird stuff. Weird, wacky stuff. Wild stuff. Anyway, but uh, God, it's just, yeah, Eric, it's not going the way you think it's going, this interview. <laughs> Besides, Carrie Lake, here's a woman who still denies that she lost the governor election in Arizona. Still denies it. Still thinks she won. Amazing to me. But, yeah, so they're doing the interview. Let's see. We'll watch one more clip here real quick. Give me one sec. Um, so this is Luke again with one more clip with them. Yeah, what the hell is drinking? Like, I, I, you know, you talk about like apple juice, right? You yeah. know, what are drugs? I had no idea, but every single day, they're drinking their drugs and smoking. And um, he was strict. He was strict in his own way. Um, he had high uh, expectations of us. Uh, he also made us work very, very hard. I was on construction sites when I was 11, 12 years old. You know, doing demo, breaking down walls, wow. concrete, That's sheetrock, right. uh, plumbing. I mean, stuff I literally still do for myself. You know, these days. And, so you uh, know how a building, you know how a skyscraper is built. You know how you're uh, making minimum wage and. Oh, oh well, that's telling. Wait, and he put us on those sites because he cared about work ethic. There was no free time. There was no nonsense. So, so okay, so your dad paid you minimum wage and had you working for him as child labor, <laughs> and none of that struck you as odd. Now that you're an adult. Furthermore, I'm telling you right now. Look at his hands. That is not a guy who's swinging a hammer to knock down walls for six hours. <laughs> no freaking way. I mean, he did say he was like 11. Well, he's saying he still does that stuff for himself today. I'm sure he still fixes his own plumbing. So maybe he did it one time in his adult life, and now that's like, he can be like, well, I'm going to do this, and now I can say that, you know? Yeah, that's probably all it is. But yeah, no, it's just... It's just wild, but they're trying to, I don't know what they're trying to do. They're trying to help out dad or what? Well, there is one Trump kid who's not trying to help out daddy. And that is Ivanka. Uh Uh-oh, what's Ivanka doing? Oh. Well, there really is no equivalency. All of my emails that relate to any form of government work, which was mainly scheduling and logistics and and managing the fact that I have a home life and a work life are all part of the public record. But your father hammered Hillary Clinton on this, said that it was criminal, she should be locked up. I think she's pathetic. I think she should be in jail for what she did with her emails, okay? So the idea of lock her up doesn't apply to you? No. That was even. So I want to point this out because that was, he starts this out with a clip from that. That's 2018. 
so they got the whole Hillary being stupid with her emails. Big inve investigation. It almost it pretty much cost her the election because the FBI came out with that. And that was that guy. What was his name? Comer, the big tall guy that was in the F director of the FBI, which was a dick move. He did that, you know, and screwed up the election. But anyway, so Hillary turns out no nothing criminal. It was mostly just that she was careless, and she wasn't the only one. There were other people that did. Then we find out that Ivanka was doing the same shit. Right? During the campaign. And then when she was working at the White House and the woman's asking her, well, you're doing the same thing. Do you think Hillary should be in jail? Well, yeah, I know my father said that, da, 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 but that doesn't apply to you? No, it doesn't apply to me. <laughs> it applies to everybody else. It doesn't apply to me. <laughs> but it, good, it gives you a good sense of sort of where Ivanka's head's at about this. You know, if she can get away with it, she's going to get away with it. Well, that's what she's trying to do right now. And let's have Ben come back in and tell us a little bit about that. She's trying to bail yeah. on the rest of the family. Gosh, subpoena that Ivanka Trump just filed trying to avoid testifying at the trial in either week four or five when her testimony is expected. It may even go to week six. Before doing that, though, I just want to show you these things just to remind you we should never forget the level of corruption that existed during the Trump administration. Here is Jared and Ivanka headline. They made $640 million while they were given positions at the White House. Jared Kushner was not even qualified to obtain a security clearance, yet he held major positions, received classified information, and oh yeah, um, the Saudi Crown Prince MBS during the Trump administration boasted that Jared Kushner was in his pocket. The Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman told confidence that Kushner discussed the names of royal family members opposed to his power grab and gave. So we're going to get into that in a sec, but it's like, yeah, they took a ton of money. Um, the Saudi Crown Prince also gave him, what was it? six billion dollars to invest and Ivanka what she did recently was she's supposed to testify in the New York trial she sent in a letter saying uh, basically a motion to to quash the subpoena against her so she wouldn't have to testify and she's basically saying well look I wasn't really involved in that that's all my father and Eric and Don Jr. so I shouldn't have to testify or implicate myself with them in any way shape or form She's literally trying to throw them all, all under the bus and get out of this. Because her and Jared walked away with a ton of money. They're fine now. That's insane. So she, her father becomes president. She begs him for the job at the White House. He gives her and Jared jobs at the White House. They, they use it corruptly. They take as much money as they can. And then when her father gets in trouble and he gets indicted, four indictments now, right? What does she do? I don't know him. I, you know, she does the same shit he does to everybody else. I don't know him. I wasn't involved with that. Oh my God. So I guess what I wonder is, you know, will he just gladly take her back and they'll, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think she wants anything to do with him. I think she's her, her and Jared have pretty much cut that because they lost all their friends. Nobody wants to associate with them other than the MAGA scumbags who they can't stand. So, well, I don't know. I'm not so sure. I would like to think that they cut ties, but the truth of the matter is if there's another big position to be held where a bunch more money can come their way and whatever, I, I'm not convinced well, that they... Trump wins real even even have their own sort of screwed up ethics enough to be like, mm, no, I don't want to do that because I've decided I don't really like the way you are. I think it'll be like, yeah, well, no, know? no, no. If Trump wins re-election, she'll come crawling back, her and Jared. For sure. But if he doesn't yeah, and he goes exactly. to prison, they're going to pretend they never met him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Fair weather for sure. Oh. The, the kids like that, that grow up with rich parents like that, that are totally under control, their parents are all like that. They'll suck up to mommy and daddy when they're getting stuff. But when they're not getting anything, they bail. 
Yeah. Sounds about right. You've met some of my ex-girlfriends. You know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, you've got great taste in women, Duncan. Great fantastic, taste in women. Fantastic taste in women. Well, so it was that Trump is screwed. I don't know. I... I I'm not, I wouldn't be shocked if he's in prison by this time next year. Or at least getting sentenced. I don't know how he doesn't get prison time at this point. So, he'd probably die in prison. I, I mean, I freaking hope that's true. I mean, the evidence appears to be like completely stacked up against him. And I know the Republicans like to think that certain individuals are better than the law or whatever, but. Yeah. It's not what I think necessarily, so yeah. yeah.